In October 1492, massive flocks of southward migrating Eskimo curlews, described as a river of birds, overflew Christopher Columbus's three lost ships. Guided by the curlews to an island landfall, the Italian-born explorer claimed discovery for Spain of the fabulous New World, including its land, people, and birds. One can get a glimpse of what Barbados looked like 300 years ago at Graham Hall Nature Sanctuary. Graham Hall contains the last significant wildlife reserve and mangrove forest on the island. For centuries, Graham Hall was a stopping point for migratory birds traveling the Caribbean flyway between North and South America. Attracted by inland ponds and bays teeming with fish, sandpipers, plovers, egrets, and many other species flock to Barbados in vast numbers to nest and rear their young. But since 1626, Barbados has lost most of its forest cover and pristine habitat as sugar plantations and development changed the landscape. Today, the south coast of Barbados is a crowded scene and busy roads offer few places for children, adults and families to safely walk, ride a bicycle or experience nature. Barbados, like many developed nations around the world, is learning about good environmental and urban planning the hard way. Graham Hall is the last significant green area on the south coast between the airport and Bridgetown. This 240-acre area is largely owned by the government of Barbados. The 91-acre Graham Hall wetland is here. Designated as an International Ramsar Site in 2006 under the authority of the International Convention on Wetlands, it includes the 35-acre Graham Hall Nature Sanctuary. Money earned from visitor operations helps pay for environmental management of the 30-acre wetland within the sanctuary. The sanctuary provides daily formal and informal education programs for Barbadian schoolchildren and public visitors. Visitor access is available to everyone. There is not a single stair step on any of the walkways or in shaded rest areas. The sanctuary also supports scientific research and continued environmental restoration and management of the wetland habitat and monitors water quality and nesting activity of Caribbean flyway birds. However, continued private support of the sanctuary and adjoining lands is in question. Owners of the wetland include the government of Barbados, the sanctuary and a private holding company who has not indicated an interest in the environmental future of the wetland. The fight to preserve this last green space continues. In 2008, a landmark study showed that the economic value of the Graham Hall wetland and the Graham Hall Nature Sanctuary far exceeded its size. According to Dr. Alan Williams of Trinidad, a consulting economist to the Inter-American Development Bank and other international agencies, if the Graham Hall wetlands are preserved for future generations, they will leverage tremendous economic benefit to Barbados and the parishes of the South Coast. The value of the lands is now estimated at over $500 million. The concept that parklands can provide major economic and social benefits to a nation is not new. Surveys show that when land is protected in urban areas, the adjacent land often increases in value with homes selling for 10 to 20% more than comparable homes without access to parks. Progressive examples of how parks improve quality of life and economic value can be found in such places as Port of Spain in Trinidad. There, the 260-acre Queen's Park Savannah was acquired as a parcel of land known as Paradise Estate in 1817 and regulated as a park in 1882. The Savannah, as it is known, is a favorite of families and tourists and is regarded internationally as a national treasure for the nation of Trinidad and Tobago. And in New York City, the 843-acre Central Park provides recreation, entertainment, and tranquility to millions each year. Studies have proven that over a trillion dollars in economic and social benefits accrue to surrounding New York City and to the state of New York each year. But Central Park almost didn't happen. Over the heavy objections of local developers and politicians, the land was finally acquired in 1858. 
In retrospect, the decision to preserve these open green spaces may not have been supported by any justifiable data or knowledge at that time. In hindsight, they appear to be wise, visionary decisions rather than knowledge-based decisions. In 2007, citizen protests helped defeat an attempt by a foreign developer to build a water park in the environmental buffer lands surrounding the Graham Hall wetland. In the same year, over 6,000 local Barbadians signed a petition to create Graham Hall National Park, a 240-acre green area which includes the Graham Hall Nature Sanctuary and adjoining wetlands. There is evidence of growing international support for the new park. In 2008, the newly elected government of Barbados, led by Prime Minister David Thompson, recognized the tremendous multi-generational economic and social value of Graham Hall and began investigating specific ways to combine local, international and private support to preserve the legacy.